So now, our verse or our text for the day is in uh, John chapter 10. Okay, who wants to read verses 1 to 21 only? I'll read that. I'll read. Okay, you read. <laughs> John 10. John 10. John 10, verse 1 to 21. Oh, okay. Uh... John 10, chapter 10, um, verse 1. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hears his voice. As he calls his own sheep a name and leads them out, when he has driven out all of his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, but they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of the strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, they did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, Amen. I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came... Before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved, and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they may they might have life and have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own, sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, these also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down, and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. Again, there was a division among the Jews because of these words. Many of them said, he is possessed and out of his mind. Why well, listen to him? Others said, these are not the words of one possessed. Surely a demon cannot open the eyes of the blind. Can he? Amen. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for You're reading welcome. the word and praying for, for us or for this Bible study. You're welcome. Okay. So now... Let's study this passage, okay? So this is about, this is also the continu continuation of our story last week. So this is, uh, Jesus was speaking to the unbelieving Pharisees and some of the Jews, okay? So, let's continue this now. So I'll read it again in verse 1. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep the gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out okay so jesus here is trying to illustrate through a parable or a story to the Pharisees and some of the Jews there no? about the good shepherd, his sheep, and there were also thief and robber. Okay? Those who are not going through the gate, instead they climb over the fence, they, they call it the thief and the robber. Okay? But the one who enters the gate is the shepherd. Okay, the shepherd... He was the one who owns the sheep 
And he really loves the sheep and he takes care of them. So in this parable, let's try to let's try to study this well now. So the good shepherd here, okay, the good shepherd here is no other than our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, if you look at Psalm, so we will use also Psalm chapter 23 as our reference Bible verses. Okay. So, we will juggle from between Psalm 23 and John chapter 10. Okay? So, I will read it for you in Psalm 23. Oh, Misha, can you read Psalm 23 one, verses 1 to 3? I'm sorry. Yeah, verses 1 to 3. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right paths. Bringing honor to his name. Amen. Thank you, Misha. So, this is why I'm telling you that Jesus here is the good shepherd. Okay? Remember that. Jesus is the good shepherd. And another character here in this story is, uh, uh, are the sheep. Who are those sheep? The sheep are those people who believe and follow Jesus as their shepherd. Okay? There are the believers. Okay? Because not all people acknowledge Jesus as the shepherd of their souls, okay? Those who believe only, okay? There's another thing also here that we need to consider. The sheep pen or the sheep enclosure, what's that? The sheep corral, the sheep fold, okay? So this, this the sheep pen pertains to God's presence, no? We are protected by God's presence, okay? If we're, so that we will be protected from danger. Okay, so the sheep are always in the presence of God. Okay, so I will read to you Psalm 23, 4 again. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Okay, so God is always close beside us, the shepherd of our soul. Okay, so we don't need to be afraid of anything. He will protect us. Okay, another character, other characters here in this parable is take a look. Uh, also, let's take a look at the thief and the rubber. Who are those thief and rubber? They are those people like the Pharisees and the teachers of the religious law. Again, this is what we we talk about last week. Now, the Pharisees and the teachers of the religious and the religious laws. They are the ones. They are the thief and robbers. They, they're stealing away and persuading the sheep or they're persuading the people and teaching them false teachings that they should not believe in Jesus Christ. That they should not believe uh, that Jesus again is the Messiah. So they're preventing the people to go to the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so why did I say that? Because in Matthew 23, 13, I will read it for you. Matthew 23, verse 13, Jesus told them these words. No? What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites. Jesus calls them hypocrites. For you shut down the, you shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You won't go in yourselves. And you don't let others enter either. Okay? So, that's why people, uh, that's why Jesus calls them hypocrites. No? For they shut the door of the kingdom of heaven. And, and also, they won't go there themselves. And also, they don't want others to enter in heaven either. Okay? So, they are the thief and the robbers. Okay? You get that? Repeat, repeat that again? With the, okay. the, who's the robbers? The robbers are the Pharisees. Okay? And the religious teachers of religious law. Okay? Because why Why is it? Because they're the one persuading us okay, and teaching. They're, they're, teaching, they're giving people wrong teaching about God. So, in Matthew, Matthew 23, verse 13, it says there, 
that Jesus told them, What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You won't go in yourselves and you don't let others enter either. Okay? So they are the thieves and robbers. Okay, because of wrong teachings that they impart in the minds of the people. That Jesus is not God, don't believe in him. Okay. Is that okay with you? Okay? Yeah. Okay. In verse 3, let's read again verse 3. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. This is a very nice verse, uh, guys. So, it means that Jesus knows every name of his sheep. Okay? Jesus personally knows you. He knows us. It means the sheep and the, sh the, sheep and the shepherd have a relationship. No? Uh, they have a good relationship. It means that they're not just ordinary. We're not just ordinary acquaintance with God. No? He calls us by name. He calls us his friends. He knows. He knows what's. He knows us personally. He knows what makes uh, uh, that the things that makes us happy. He knows our likes and dislikes. His main priority is to to give us a better life, to give us joy. Uh, his main priority also is to put smile on our faces. Uh, he knows all our needs. And according to, he takes care of us. The shepherd takes care of the needs of the sheep. Okay. Actually, in Galatians verses uh, chapter 1, 15, <clears throat> the Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul is the Apostle of Christ now. When he said in Galatians chapter 1, verse 15, okay, I will read it for you. But even before I was born, God chose me and called me by His marvelous grace. Then it pleased Him. This is true. Because you know, even if we're still inside our mother's womb, okay, God chose us. He called us no? by His marvelous grace. And also, <clears throat> it pleases God. No? That pleases Him, calling us, okay, choosing us. Choosing us. In John chapter 15, also 15, 15, it says here that Jesus said in John chapter 15, 15, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. Look at this. I have called you friends. For everything that I have I learned from the Father, I have made known to you. Isn't it this great? God calls us his friends. Wow. Let's move to let's move to verse 4. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Okay, what this? So this verse verses means that the people who knows and listens to Jesus' voice are truly his followers. Okay, so so that's why we're doing this Bible studies. So when we always do this Bible study, we always read the Word of God. Someday we will recognize. And learn the voice of our shepherd or our shepherd's voice. And, and when we learn the shepherd's voice, we will learn also the, the truth. Okay, and this truth will set us free. And it will change our the, the our minds, the way we think. Uh, and it, you know, it will change us. We will think what is right now because of this truth. We will do what is right, okay? And also, <clears throat> excuse me. The sheep don't listen to the stranger's voice, okay? 
because these strangers they're they're trying to to deceive or or to sway us no? to sway us from from believing in lies okay so just like the Pharisees now again just like the Pharisees those false teachers so there's a lot of false teachers in this world guys they're trying to trick us by telling us lies okay by telling us lies and you know right now in our generation they're they're these false teachers they're using different uh channels of information wrong information no? through the internet through movies televisions and they're telling jesus they're telling us that jesus is just a human being jesus is not god don't believe him so there are many false teachers now okay so there are the ones there are the strangers who are trying to deceive us and move us away from god okay moving us away from the kingdom of heaven so when we hear their voices okay just like the sheep what what we should do we should run away from them or else we'll be in danger okay guys so don't believe everything that you read in the internet or you saw in the in the internet you should believe in listen or believe in the voice of your shepherd that is where can you hear the voice of your shepherd it is in the word of god amen amen, amen. okay okay so jesus let's continue in, G, in chapters in verse 6 now Jesus used this figure of speech, okay, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. <laughs> They're not, they don't understand the word of God, that it pertains to them. There are the thieves and robbers, okay. Therefore, Jesus said again, very truly I tell you in verse 7, look at this guys, I am the gate for the sheep. This is one thing that we need to to. To focus on very truly i tell you i am the gate for the sheep all who have come before me are thieves and robbers but the sheep have not listened to them i am the gate whoever enters through me will be saved amen again in verse 9 i am the gate whoever enters through me will be saved so another thing that we'll note here is jesus is telling us that he is the gate Okay, figuratively speaking, okay, he is the gate for the sheep. It means there's no other way in which people will obtain salvation except by believing in Jesus alone, in Jesus Christ alone. Okay, if you're going to read John, John 14, 6, it says here, who wants to read John 14, 6? It's just you move forward. Maybe four pages. In John 14, 6. John 26. John 14, 6. Okay. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth of the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> so it means that Jesus, what? Jesus is telling us that he is the gate of the sheep. It means that from this verse, there's no other way except Jesus is the truth. Uh, the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me. So the way to heaven, the way to the Father is only through Jesus. No. So there's no other gate going to heaven. Guys, this is not, this is not like the airport. No, the airport, there's so many gates. <laughs> So many gates going to different places. But going to heaven, there's only one gate. It, it's only through Jesus. Okay, You have to believe in the gospel of Jesus that he died on the cross for your sins. And he rose again after three days so that we may obtain eternal life. Okay? Not through our self-effort. Sometimes... Sometimes we have this mindset 
that if I do good things, if I give to the poor, if I do righteous things, I will go to heaven. That's okay. We should do that. I'm not telling that's not good. We should do that. But the way to heaven is you should believe in Jesus Christ first before you do that. Okay? Okay. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will have eternal life. Okay. Let's continue in verse 9. They will come and go and out and find pasture. In verse 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it in full. Okay. Again, guys, God's main purpose for us or for you is to bring us in a good pasture. Okay. It means He will provide all your needs, okay, for you to have a beautiful life. Do you like that? Do you like that? God will provide all your needs. That's why He's blessing your, your parents. He's blessing you. He's sending you to a, a, a nice school, a beautiful school, so that you will have a beautiful life. Not only here, but also in heaven. Okay. Unlike, okay, unlike the thief, the thief and robber, their main purpose is different. It's opposite to what God is planning, you know. It's opposite to what God is to provide you beautiful, have a beautiful life. But this thief and robber, the, their purpose is to kill us or to kill you and destroy us. Okay? Okay. So, in our life today, so in our present generation, who are the thieves and robbers that will destroy us? I will give you an example. One example is bad company okay bad company why did i what am i saying this no. guys you must learn to choose your friends and the people that you want to be with every day okay you must learn to choose them why because if you're not going to choose your friends okay they could ruin your life okay why because in Proverbs 13.20, I will tell you this now. Listen, guys, please. In Proverbs 13.20, walk with the wise because and become wise. For a corrupt... Oh, it's okay. Again, again. I will read it for you. Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. Amen. Okay? If you go with... With people who do the right, righteous things or good things, they are wise people. But if you go to foolish people who do bad things, we will suffer or you will suffer. If They will lead you to, to, to vices. They will lead you to do bad, bad things that will destroy yourself. Okay? So, don't, the Bible is telling us that walk with the wise. And become wise. Who wants to read Psalm 1 verses 1 to 3? Can you volunteer? Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join with in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating it on it day and night. Like they are like trees planted along the river path, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Len. In Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked. Amen. Or stand in the way that sinners take. Or sit in the company of the mockers. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. Amen. If you don't walk in the steps of the wicked or follow the, the, the ways of the mockers, the company of the mockers, okay, and your delight is in the word of God, what will happen to us? You will be like a tree planted by the streams of water. Wow. 
So the water is there is God you know, providing all the nutrition you know, to you, the all the things that you need. And what will happen to you in all season, you will bear fruit. Amen. Your leaf will not wither. And whatever you do, guys, you will prosper. Amen. Okay. Are you still there? <laughs> okay. In, yes. In 1 Corinthians 15.33, I will read this, this to you now. Bad company corrupts good character. Bad company corrupts good character. So guys, again, choose your friends. If your friends make you do something bad, change them. <laughs> Sorry guys, no. You have to change them or else you'll get in trouble. You will not like like the tree planted beside the 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 river of water. Okay? <laughs> okay. So, in verse 11, I am the good shepherd the Lord said. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hard hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the, the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is, a, he is just a hard hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Okay. So for example, if the sheep is in dire situation no. Oh, yeah. What would Jesus do? What would the shepherd do? Okay, if we are in danger. Remember this now. That Jesus loves us more than his life. Okay? More than his life. He did that. He showed that to us when he gave his life for us. Okay, when we we're in danger of sin, of dying. Okay? However, the hired servants, okay? Okay? Those people got the uh, uh, gave his uh, words to them. It's supposed to be, they would take care of us, okay? They would take care of the sheep, but instead, what happened to them? When the wild animals, like the, the wolf or whatever wild animal it is, they should be the one protecting it. But what happened? They're the first one to run away, okay? Because they're, they're not concerned with the sheep. They don't own the sheep. Jesus owns us. And he owns us more. He's, 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 he, 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 we are precious to him more than his life. Amen? So, that's how the shepherd loves his sheep. Okay. Again, let's go back to Psalm 23. This is a reference chapter or verses who wants to read psalm 23 4 zach can you read psalm 23 4 okay psalms 23 verse 4 even when i walk through the darkest valley i will not be afraid for you are close beside me your rod and your staff protect and comfort me amen thank you zach okay so it says in this verse that the staff or the rod of the shepherd will always protect us from, from danger, okay? From any dangerous animals, okay? So that's how, that's how God loves us. He's always there to protect us, amen, according to this verse. Verse 14, I am a good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the fathers know me, knows me. And I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Okay, Jesus here is trying to illustrate that the close relationship between him and his Father, or his Heavenly Father. So, if the, they have a close relationship no, from his Father, Jesus wants us also to be like that. No, He wants us to have a close relationship with him. The shepherd and the sheep, okay? So, Jesus here is treating us, okay, as a very special person, okay, in his life. That's one 
that's one of the perks if you if you believe in Jesus. Amen. The Lord will treat you a very important person. Amen. In his life. Okay. In Psalm 23, 6, I will read it for you. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. He will He will bring us. In his presence he will bring us whatever god is experiencing all his wealth all his the comfort that he has everything that he owns he will share it to us that's how special we are to jesus amen all right i will dwell in the house of the lord forever we will live there in his house, in his marvelous house, in his grandiose house. All right. Verse 16. I have other sheep that are not in this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and they shall be one flock and one shepherd. Again. So there are other sheep that I... Okay, that the Lord Jesus wants them also to be in that flock, in his flock. Okay, so what does this mean? So, God will use you guys and me so that this other sheep, we can bring them to the Lord's flock. Amen. God will use you as an instrument, your life. That's why God is changing you, your life, so that Jesus will shine in your life and these people will believe in, in Jesus as well. Okay, So we are the instrument of God to bring them back or to bring them in to the flock of Jesus. Amen? So that's why uh, in whatever way, in whatever way guys, we should reach out to this we should reach out these people okay because the lord said they will also listen to my voice so that's why before we ask you this permission to to share this bible study in in the internet why because we want to reach out those people who are not yet a believer of jesus because in whatever way we reach them out, whether we know them or not, let's speak to them. Let's share the word of God. Maybe the, the Holy Spirit will speak in their hearts. And just, that's why Jesus here in this verse is telling us, they too will listen to my voice and be saved. Okay, so, so why are we here in this Bible study? Why? Because the Lord brought us here. So these people, that they don't know Jesus, if we share the word of God to them, they will be saved as well. Amen? So the kingdom of God will expand. Okay? The flock of Jesus will become larger and bigger and growing. Amen? Amen? Are you still there? Amen. Okay. So in whatever way, guys, in whatever way, show kindness to others, show your love to them, show the love of Jesus in your life, they will believe Jesus, okay? It is much better if you show your kindness to them, the love of Jesus in them, so that they will believe that Jesus is really a good shepherd or a good God. In verse 17, are we in verse 17? Yeah, in verse 17. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I laid it down for my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. Okay, what does this thing mean? It's the Lord's initiative. No one forced him to lay down his life. Okay? He really 
voluntarily, out of his goodness and the kindness of his heart, he offered his life to us so that we will be saved. That's one of the characteristics of a good shepherd, to lay down his life for his sheep. That's why the Father loves Jesus, because he didn't force Jesus to help or to save his sheep. He just take it, take the initiative to save them because he loves them. Amen. There's no other God like that. We cannot find a guide, a God like this, like this. Okay. There are so-called other gods. You know. Some people believe in a so-called God or idols, but this so-called God. Instead of this so-called God offering his life to them, the, their worshippers or these people who worship the so-called God, they are the ones who, who offer who, or offer sacrifice and offer their lives to their so-called God. Amen. But in Jesus, it's the complete opposite of Jesus. Jesus, he's not the one who you will offer your life to him. He will be the one to offer everything to you. He will offer his life to you. He will offer his forgiveness to you. He will offer uh, the things the need, the, the need that you need every day. He will take care of you. Not you will take care of your God. God will take care of you. Okay? It's not, this is not an, uh, like an idol that you... You give him, uh, you offer him food every day. No, sometimes you offer, no, some. Uh, I don't know what what are the things that you offer to this so called God, but it's a diff. Our God is different. Jesus is different from them. Okay, he he, he will serve us. Unlike these other gods, so called gods, you will serve them, but Jesus Christ will serve us. Amen. There's no other God like this. There's no other God like this, guys. This is on this is this is Jesus. He is the only one. No, there's no other one like him. No one can compare to the love of Jesus for his sheep for us. That's why you are blessed, guys. God called you and chosen you. Amen. Verse 19, we're almost done. The Jews who heard these words were again divided. Many of them said, He is a demon possessed and raving mad. Why well, listen to him? But others said, There are there are there are not the sayings of a man, a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? That's our topic. Last week, so they're trying to, they're confused. They're trying to analyze that if if Jesus is a de, is a demon possessed guy, you know, but they're saying that can a demon open the eyes of the blind? No, Satan cannot do that. He cannot open the eyes of a blind man. Only God. Do you believe that? Only God can heal us. Can create a miracle. Satan is just a deceiver. He's just going to trick us. <laughs> so, so here. So some people believe in Jesus and some are not. So it's our free will. It's our own will. If we're going to believe in Jesus and follow him. Or we're also like the Pharisees. That even though Jesus showed a miracle to them. They... They, they still don't believe. What else can Jesus show to them so that they will believe? Okay? Nothing. Blessed are those, again, blessed are tho those people who don't see, but they still believe. Amen? Alright. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. Okay? Whew. Have you learned something or you have any questions?
You have to learn something. Yeah. You have any question about the Good Shepherd? The sheep? Seems clear to me. The robbers and thief? Or the... Whatever. Oh, you answered my robbers question, so that yeah. was good. Okay, okay. So now, let's hear it from you guys. <laughs> it's your turn now. Alright. Who's gonna be um, the first to share something? Maybe the Lord spoke to you uh, when you read the Word of God. You, you read this parable. You read Psalm 23. Share that to us, guys. So that we'll be blessed sure. also. I, I learned that um that it, you can't trust you can't trust um just people you have to trust good people and um at, when you when you read this to us i felt like that it, it does reflect in my life i've met people that weren't like the nicest people in the world and they still and they still want to be my friend but sometimes you gotta you gotta know you have to choose the right friends like bunk said because it will ruin your life and it's not gonna go the way that you want it to um but also, but even though like life can't be always that great, like Jesus is with us. He doesn't make us feel afraid. He may, he uh, protects us, and we should not listen to the lies of other people. You gotta li you have to listen to the word of Jesus and, and God. And we we gotta um, you gotta we gotta truly listen to them. Not like just listen to them and. And just say, okay, okay, I understand. You just gotta, you have to really listen to him. And, and he will answer our prayers in the most um, spectacular ways. All right, that's all. That's all. <laughs> Hi, thank you, Alex. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. You, you listen to the voice of God through the word of God in the Bible. And you will know, uh, and also, if you have friends who, who, who really, you know, bad influence, you know, don't change them, okay? Uh, before it's too late, change them. Let's go with the good, with the company who are also believers of Jesus and who do those right things. I, I've seen some inmates on the news that they've changed their life to God. Like they have, there was like, there was like, sometimes they have like those Bibles in, in the jails and it changes their lives and they've done good after. Like I, so I believe that there's a point in time that I think any, everyone can like, that God will open up their opportunity to, to speak to the Lord, you know? Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Uh, who else? I'll share. Okay, Dan. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I I really I really um I really learned a lot from uh, this uh, reading that we did um, because um, when it comes to companionship, um, the people that surround you um will will influence you greatly and um. Not, not only, you know, uh, with self-esteem, um, but also morally. So uh, choosing your friends wisely, and you, you'll learn. Um, for me, personally, um, I've met people who I had a lot of fun with, but, like, they're, they're not the, the right type of people to be around all the time because um, they'll, they'll, um, they'll make it your, your pro their problems your problems. And it won't be good for um, you know your mental health, but um, you know, but you know, someone like Jesus is willing to forgive uh, all sinners, and um, even even if they don't, you know, even if that person doesn't like Jesus, he'll still forgive them, and um, it really shows that, that he has a strong will to to love any anyone or anything. Um, yeah. You know, devoutly and uh, with uh, open arms and that, that's that's very strong um 
it reminds me of uh, Martin Luther King because that's someone um, who will not use violence to uh, to uh, uh, force uh, you know his beliefs onto anyone else. Um, but that that's why I learned. And, and um, there there are many sinners out there, and you'll come across them. Ultimately, um, you have the choice. They don't choose for you. You you have the choice to 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 pick uh, who surrounds you, and uh, and you know those they could either lift you up or become a great burden to you. So that's why I learned. Wow! <laughs> Thank you, Dad. That's that's good. Okay, so again, uh, uh, a lot of teenagers or young people they were one of the things that destroy them is their bad companies so this is the bible is very clear that we should choose the the people around us that you want to be with okay remove bad companies in your life if you want to succeed in life okay they're the ones who will pull you down and destroy you they're like the thief and the robber Thank you, Dan. You're, you're, you're welcome. Great. Good. Thank you.